This is Final K, and today I'm bringing you guys a Terra God Guide. I have not done a God Guide in quite some time, uh, just because I've done most of the gods, and there hasn't really been too much change in the meta, especially like with the, the God selection and stuff. There's definitely some characters I could do it on, and Terra is definitely one of them right now, considering she's seen uh, a recent rise in the meta for sure, due to um, just how the, the solo lane meta is working, uh, the itemization for her, and basically how comps are being drafted around right now. So. What you saw basically before qualifying land was that Terra saw a lot of play. She um, really rose into the ranks of solo and she's probably one of the top solos before the qualifiers. And because of that, you, you kind of saw a counter meta um, as far as like drafting and stuff for Terra. Um, I wouldn't say that she was the, the best god in solo, but she was definitely up there. And part of the reason you see gods like Aposh, Cupid, um, Ardeo, Odin, um, just stuff like that. Uh, come out is because it's a really good pick into not only Terra but a lot of the the meta picks, especially gods with no CC immunity. Um, Ares as well, another pick that uh, is really good into it, in, into stuff like Terra, Erlang, which is one of the top picks right now, um, Opwash, which is another top pick with no CC immunity. It kind of uh, just like a cycle of countering each other. But um, that's part of the reason you saw a lot of those gods, and that's kind of why Terra wasn't seen. Um, well, not not seen, but she was seen a little bit at Worlds. She just wasn't seen as like a top top pick, and usually saw her drafted later on to the into the uh, the picks and bans. Considering you could see the en the enemy team comp and see whether they were countering you or not, so you could have like a, a good matchup with Terra. So um, Terra just gets hard countered by the cripples and uh, stuff like that. So um, yeah, but we're just gonna go over Terra and how to play her in the solo lane because she's definitely a good character, and you can pick her and rank pretty much whenever and feel good about it as long as you know how to play her. Um, and in order to know how to play her, I'll, I'll help you uh, with that today. I'll show you some tips and tricks, her build, uh, what you want to be doing overall, and in general, and what she's really strong at. Um, and just like any other god guide, we're going to start out with the, the starting build uh, and go over her abilities very briefly um, before we get into the nitty gritty of it all. So let's go ahead and do that. So your start is going to almost always be Guardian's uh, Blessing because, you know, it's just the, the best starter item right now in solo. It's just too good. The regen you get from it, the extra gold you get from it, um, it makes it almost impossible to be soloed, especially early on in the game, if you pick up this item. Um, and you're going to be going Chalice and Teleport. The only other relic that you're going to be looking to go, possibly at level 1, is a Beads, if they have something like Fenrir or Ares in the solo lane. Two, both of these gods are pretty hard counters to Terra, and they have a lot of kill potential on you if you don't go Beads. So, uh, oftentimes you just want to go Beads because you don't want to be getting farmed too, on, uh, too much on cooldown. So, usually you just go Teleport, Beads, if you're against those two characters. Excuse me. Um, but the starting build is basically the same no matter what. You can also go just uh, two health spots if you feel like maybe at level one you don't want to push your lane and you want to go somewhere else on the map and maybe try and steal speed buff or something. Sometimes it's nice to go an extra uh, health spot or two just to make sure that you don't get poked out too hard and that you survive. Um, or if you're in a bad matchup and you feel like you you may possibly get too low early on and before you have enough for your, your boots three, then you can go to the health spots. But I've never really had that trouble. Um, I feel like if you know how to play it well, then you should be fine with just going boots one. Um, and let's go over Terra's abilities real quick at a very uh, um, novice level, basically. So Terra's one is a dash that you can use twice if you're able to hit your Crushing Earth, which is your second ability, or your Monolith, which is your third ability. If you dash through either of these, you'll get a second instant, instance of your dash, which also means that it procs twice on the damage and procs uh, items twice. So things like Mage's Blessing or Soul Reaver will proc twice on the, both dashes. Um, so if you hit it twice, it's 520 damage. So... Um, definitely an important note for that ability, but it's basically just a, a non-CC immune dash that you can use twice if you use, interact with the other abilities. Um, Terrace 2 is, I'll have to show you that. So you place two walls, which um, also block movement and abilities. Um, certain abilities, of course, not basically abilities that don't go through walls. Um, and you can actually activate it again early, and it will stun whoever's in the middle and do a lot of damage. Uh, but another thing, interesting thing to note with this ability, like I just talked about with the dash, is that you can dash through the walls on each side, as Terra. You can dash through this, and it will do shatter damage in a cone, equal to that of your the same amount of damage as your dash. So they both go up to 260 on each. So if you hit the dash damage plus the, the um, shatter damage, plus the dash damage again and the shatter damage again, so you hit, hit them both like this. Let me get my ability back. See, there's a person standing right in the middle of this. I hit him with that. They are, for some reason, still standing there. Um, it's gonna be 500, or it's gonna be 520 damage plus 520 damage because you're hitting him with four instances of damage. So that's 1,040 damage. So that's a lot of damage. And that's part of the reason you see Terra played in Soul a lot because of her um, ability to do a lot of damage. So that's basically how her two works. 
Um, important to note that the wall lasts for five seconds, so you can use this to block off enemy movement and stuff. Like if you wanted to block somebody trying to go to Fire Giant here, um, you could throw your two down and maybe even your three, and it would just uh, block their movement pretty well. Then our three is her monolith, so this is a really good ability because it's so big and it does a lot of different things. It's a heal per tick, so if you have allies standing in this, they're going to be healing um, up to 15 per 0.5 seconds. Um, and it lasts for, the monolith lasts for 10 seconds, so um, it's going to be 20 ticks of heals. But also, if you dash through it, like I talked about before, it's going to root everyone in this circle and change into a damage, um, an area of damage instead of an area of healing. So um, if they stay in that, it's going to be ticking for that. Uh, the amount of damage as you can see down here but it's also a little bit of burst damage as well up to 190 um, and the root lasts for one second which is nice i'm gonna hit level five real quick just to show you the best part of terrace kit which is our ultimate it does a whole lot of things it reduces um or it doesn't reduce but it gives your allies damage mitigation five percent and it also increases enemies um, damage taken by five percent um, it also has a burst heal a burst damage it has a heal over time um just a lot of good things about it and the most important part or at least um the easiest part about it is that it is humongous like look at the size of this thing so you want to hit as many allies with it as possible and as many enemies as with it uh with it as possible and that's pretty easy to do when the radius is it's like 55 right yeah it's 55 um so it's it's very easy to hit a lot of allies and a lot of enemies with it and like i said it's a burst heal for your for your allies and a burst damage for your enemies um i think it's three ticks of damage uh, four ticks of damage so it has to um they have to take four ticks of damage for them to get the burst um, damage on it and your allies have to get four ticks of damage for them to get the burst heal um, so that's just a general overview of Terra's abilities we're gonna get down to the nitty-gritty like I talked about with all the abilities and what you can do with them and the interactions that you can use um, to your advantage and the tips and tricks but um, first I want to show you how to play Terra at level 1 and different possibilities you can go for all right we're back guys and like I said I just want to show you how you can play Terra at level 1 um, one of the best things you can do with Terra is actually wall off your wave we talked about how Terra's 2 blocks uh, the minions actually blocks their their movement and it blocks uh, player players as well in gods so something that you can do is you can actually wall off your minion wave so the minion wave spawns out of here on this side and on the uh, chaos side it'll spawn in a very similar fashion through this gate um basically you just place it right there and what will happen is the minions will come out of here and walk into this corner and then funnel towards like this side of the the wall and uh, i'll show you how to do it here in a second and one reason that you do this is because it makes it so the wave pushes in your favor for one uh, at the second wave but it also makes it so that the minions are stacked in your tower so it's closer to your blue buff since a lot of times you're not going to be able to share your blue buff um you see the minions walk back so they're stuck right here against the wall um now they're all going to come out and they're stacked super hard um so if you think about it if i'm blocking their movement and it's going to take them longer to get there the minions are going to be towards my side of the map so this means that i can share my blue buff over here i can just hug this wall while i get all of the the minions because if they're blocked then um they won't be able to get it, so I'm just gonna wall off again. Um, you can do it like that. Um, as long as you watch their, their movement and make sure that they're um, going the direction you are, just line up with it perfectly and then block it off. So now, yeah, I'm gonna lose these minions to tower, but as you notice, they're gonna die to the tower, and now I have all six of my minions pushing for this next wave. And the enemy solo either has to stay here to make sure that he gets these minions, or he has to go to his blue buff. So he's either going to lose some of the XP in the minion wave, or he has to just stay here and get all the minion wave and not get XP at the blue buff. And now, if my jungler was here, you know, I'm just in a custom game, I would be able to share my blue buff, instantly get it, and come back and look at all the minions I have for the second wave. So that means I can push this entire wave on your tower, and whoever, whatever solo I'm against, it really doesn't matter. They're going to lose most of this um, to tower. Um, they will have Guardian's Blessing, and I lost a little bit to the, the first wave, but it's no big deal. The, mo the main point of this is that um, the wave is pushing in a favor a favorable way that allows me to share my blue buff while also sharing the, uh, the mini XP that's dying because they're just killing off each other. Um, so that, yeah, that's one thing you can do with Terra level one. Um, really big, really big deal. It's uh, definitely helpful, and it's especially helpful when the enemy god is a melee character that has to walk up to the wave to get the XP. Because let's say that they're um, like Bologna, they have to. She has to walk up and use her bludgeon if she's leveling that at level one. Um, she has to walk up and use her bludgeon under tower and possibly take like a tower shot if she wants to hit the minions or um, It's just really awkward for so all she has to do or all she really can do is just sit there and let the minions die um, And then probably go towards her blue buff. So that's one strength of that another thing you can do. I know I'm level two, but um, We'll just say that we're level one for the sake of it is um Terra's level one uh, Steel potential is really big because of the stun on her two. It does a lot of damage in the center 
not only that, you get your passive, which gives you, um, I didn't really talk about it, but your passive is whenever you have an ability up, like your, your monolith or your two, or after shattering your monolith, um, your autos become a slow, basically a frostbound hammer for 1.25 seconds, and they also do a little bit of extra damage. So, for example, I did this um, against Rival at the qualifying, uh, qualifying land? Yeah, the qualifying land. <clears throat> um, basically, if you just come towards the speed buff, um, about like 20 seconds, you like look over this corner, you have to sneak back here because a lot of times junglers and mids will be looking out for you. What you can do, since you, you don't really have to push your label level 1 in solo, um, oftentimes you can find other things to do because sometimes pushing your wave is actually bad and you're only going to lose that on a couple minions of XP, which is no big deal. What you can do is come back here, make sure you're, you're hidden, and then once they start the, the their speed buff, the jungler will almost always use their ability on it. And what you can do is just walk up and clap it. And if they notice you, they may like stop autoing it. And what you can do is just auto the big guy down until it's in execute range. Keep in mind, it would already be hurt because they were damaging it. Um, but it's just a really easy way to steal the buff because the stun, if they want to try and steal it with an auto, they have to walk up to it. Because like I said, they're almost always using their ability. So they have to auto it to try and steal it. But if they do that, you can have your stun ready. And um, your autos also hit pretty hard with the passive up. Um, so yeah, that's something you can do. You could also do it on another buff, but speed is, speed is the easiest because you know where they're going to be and exactly at what time and how it's going to work out. Um, so there's two possible things you can do at level 1. And of course, you can always just start your wave, just uh, share the wave, and then go towards your blue when your jungler gets there. But um, those are two of the more creative ways to play Terra, and it will help you out and uh, gain you an advantage definitely in the long run. So... Um, yeah, we're going to go back into jungle practice and talk about her build and how to play her and her strengths and everything. So I just want to give a quick demo of how to clear the wave with Terra. Um, just level 3 real quick so I have all my abilities so I can show you. It's really simple. I just want to give you an example of doing it. Basically, you just walk up the wave, throw your crushing earth down, dash through both the uh, walls to get all the damage, and then use your second instance of your dash to dash, to dash back through your monolith so you get that extra damage. Um, you do want to make sure that you're getting your Guardian's Blessing stack, so... At all points, make sure you're keeping an eye on your damage and whether or not it's going to last hit the minions. But basically, that's how you're going to be clearing the wave, especially early on, like level 3, level 4, and stuff like that. Another thing you can do is just dash through um, the monolith and dash back through. Make sure you're hitting the minions with the dash because there's two dashes. Uh, that means two uses of your damage. And you can throw out your damage if you need the last hit or if you feel like you're going to get zoned or whatever, um, you know, however you want to do it. Another thing you can do, especially if you're getting poked out early on, it's like a bad matchup, or you feel like you're about to get ganked and you don't want to use your um, your dashes, your, you know, your escape, to actually clear the wave, you can just throw your monolith down, start healing back up like towards your tower line, and throw out your two, and then if you're getting zoned, it's out right now, and the minions are going to die soon, so you throw out your two, and or you clap your two, and now you're not going to be getting zoned, you're going to be getting XP for those minions, and while the whole time you're healing up with your monolith. Which you want to keep on your tower to make sure that the enemy solo does not auto down and just completely remove. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you can do it. And another last little thing, um, this you can use this trick especially when you already have your guardians fully stacked. Um, it'll get to a point where you're full clearing the wave with either your two or your three. It doesn't really matter once you start getting points into either of them. Uh, I max by two, so it'll get to a point where I'm just full clearing the wave with my two. Um, you can throw out your two plus your monolith. All the instances of damage right there. So, um, a really fast way to clear the wave. Um, you do use every single one of your abilities besides your ultimate to actually do it. Um, but if you just line it up perfectly, it's uh, pretty simple. And it's especially good for um, securing a blue buff. So let me go over to a blue buff real quick. Part of the reason that Terra is so good in solo is that she's really hard to invade because her blue buff defense is really good. So let's just say that I have. I'm level 5. Well, let me go buy it. I'm level 5, my power I have my pen boots, and I'm trying to defend my blue buff for whatever reason, we need it. Um, what you can do is, we'll have it up right there, you can throw out it perfectly like that, and look at the amount of damage I do that blue buff, and if I auto cancel in between, I'm basically securing that blue buff in as little as 2 seconds. And on the conquest map, there's a way you can actually throw down here, so I'll try and line it up as if you were, I was on the conquest map, and there, this is the, the path coming into my blue buff from solo lane. You can line it up so that your wall is actually blocking off the um, the path there, so that enemy solo can't get through it. And then you can just use the other side of the, the wall to um, secure the blue buff. So that's one of the easiest ways to clear the blue. Also, if you know you feel like you're not going to get invaded and you don't have the, I want to say the time, but you just don't really need to line it up. You can also just um, dash through it, auto cancel, dash, auto cancel. Shoot. 
that's another good way to uh, do the blue buff really fast. It's also, coincidentally, one of the best ways to do a lot of damage to somebody you're going on in the team fight, which we're going to talk about as well coming up. To get towards the team fights, we got to talk about the builds. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go through Terra's build real quick. Um, assuming that you start with Guardians Blessing, you almost always want to be going Pen Boots um, for a couple different reasons. One, Terra has a lot of damage in her kit, so the Pen is gonna help with that um, a good amount. But there's other characters that have a lot of damage with their kit, but you do you do go cooldown boots on, like Sobek, for example. Um, so you're probably wondering why would you go Pen Boots, and the reason for that is because I will I'll talk about enemies. these two items in a second. But you usually go Soul Reaver on Terra or Ethereal. You don't go both. You usually do not go both. You'd have Ethereal in place of Soul Reaver here. But if you go either of these items, they rely on Pen for their passives to be um, as efficient as possible. So th that's part of the reason that you go um, the Pen boots on Terra. That way you can maximize the efficiency of these two on-hit effect uh, items. So if you have the 10 here plus the 20 from Voidstone, it's going to really help out with that. And it's going to increase your damage by quite a lot. So... Um, with that being said, we'll run through the build real quick. Um, if you're against a magical, you're going to be going Void Stone. The reason for that, Void Stone is just too efficient of an item. It's very cheap, 150 health plus 60 magic protection plus 20 power, and of course the really good passive that reduces protections in an area around you that uh, increase your damage by a whole lot. It makes you basically do true da damage to their carries. Um, and that's just the perfect item on a Bruiser solo uh, Guardian. Of course, you do still want CDR on Guardians. Um, Guardians really rely on CDR, especially with high cooldowns that they have, and um, it's a luxury item that you can get from Soul Lane. You really can't get CDR items in support for the most part, um, but since you're playing kind of selfishly in solo, um, you can use the, the CDR um, to benefit you, but also your team, because you're going to be able to use your abilities more often. So that would be that. And then fourth item, this is a huge power spike for Terra. Your first two defense, or your first defense item in each... Um, instance whether it's magical or physical is always the most efficient and the most useful because the more you stack defense the um <clears throat> the less efficient it becomes and especially later on in the game when they have a lot of tank shredding items so these two items you're gonna be tanky as fuck already plus you throw on the soul reaver now you're doing an immense amount of damage you have a lot of pen to back up the soul reaver damage and you're also gonna be healing more because both your heal on your ultimate and your heal on your monolith actually scale with power as well so not only are you tanky, not only are you doing a lot of damage, but you're also helping out your team through ways of sustain because you're scaling for more. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, with a bruiser build, you usually have like one or two damage items, maybe one um, bruiser item that gives you some damage, such as like Voidstone, and the rest is defense. So, if we have our four damage I or four items right here, and one of them is damage, um, it should be to finish out the build two defense items and two items that I love going right now. Especially in the meta with the, the Titan's Bane, the Obsidian Shards, and stuff like that. Um, like Ex Executioner, maybe Spear of the Magus. Two of the items I love going are Magi's and Spirit Robe. Because both of these passives makes it very hard to kill you without having to go or invest into protections and health. Like Magi's only has 15 of each plus 300 health. 300 health is nice, but the passive on it is really going to help you survive. Plus the passive on Spirit Robe and the CCR you get from it is just really good. Damage mitigation we've talked about a lot is very, very good. So maybe you don't need Magi's because they don't have a lot of CDR, or not CDR, but a lot of CC. Um, or you feel like maybe even if they do CC you, it's not that important because you have the CCR. Um, and maybe they have three Magical, then uh, Oni, Hunters, Oni Hunters is definitely an option. Still a really good item with the damage mitigation, damage mitigation even though they, um, they nerfed the price on it. It's a little bit more expensive. Still a really good item, especially if they have three Magical. And maybe they have like an auto attack jungler and uh, maybe double hunter, like they have a hunter mid plus hunter in the, the dual lane. And mid guardian is also an option. But these five items are almost always core, especially spirit robe, soul reaver. Um, the, these three items you basically build on every guardian, uh, minus like the pen boots. Sometimes you build cooldown boots. Um, and then that last item is kind of just situational. And just think about their comp, um, your comp, and what you really need. Um, so yeah, that's that's Terra's build. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, next, let's talk about Terra's team fights and. Uh, different combos with her abilities. So let's talk about the team fights as well and to finish up the uh, build section of the video. Um, when you talk about what second relic you're gonna be going on Terra, um, you almost always wanna be going blink on her for a few reasons. One, it allows you to initiate really well. You blink it into the middle of a team fight, hit as many people as possible with your ultimate, not only enemies but allies, which puts you in the middle of everything. It makes it so they aren't ready for your initiation as well. You just instantly blink into them, get a Terra ult off on a many, as many people as possible and it's just gonna be a really good fight for you most of the time but also if you if you think about it if you wanted to initiate with Terra let me just reset my cooldown real quick if you wanted to initiate with Terra without blink like say you're playing it in support 
you have to walk up to them and then dash through them. Not only using your escape, but just making it so obvious that you want to go on them. Um, whereas if you have blink, you can kind of just like walk around a corner or kind of walk at them, but instantly blink on them and get as many people in your ult. Um, it's just going to be really good. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the more people you get in your ult, the higher chance you have of winning the team fight just because of how good Terra's ultimate is. Um, like I said, including enemies and allies. Um, but you don't always have to go blink. In a lot of situations, maybe they counter you with Odin, so you have to go phantom. Maybe you feel like you're going to be staying with your backline almost always for whatever reason, so you go something to peel for them like shell or sprint. And then, you know, something like thorns is never wrong. Or beads if they have a lot of CC. If they have a lot of CC and you really have to go beads, say they have an airy support, but you went teleport because it's not going to be airy solo. Um, they have airy support in your Terra, then possibly think to go beads or at least to magis or something like that. So you can mix mix in, uh, mesh up the, the relics there. However, uh, blink a lot of the time is going to be the go-to relic. So let's just go ahead and pick that up. So <clears throat> first and foremost, like I said, Terra's main objective in a team fight is to get a really big ult off. However, it doesn't mean that her, her regular abilities are bad. To uh, Not even the slightest, really. I mean, the, the crushing earth stun and damage is really high. The monolith root, especially the size of it, is going to be really important in a team fight. It can really zone off a lot of people. Also, a cool interaction, not really cool, but a very obvious and necessary interaction that Terra has with her ultimate is, like we talked about, it requires four ticks of damage or four instances of damage to proc the, the Terra ult or the heal. Funny enough, Terra's monolith, if you dash through it, has a dot on it. So that's going to instantly proc the Terra ult because of the four ticks of damage just basically getting proc instantly, especially if you especially if you do something... Oh, what am I doing? If you do something like this where I use Terra ult on uh, instant cast. I was just showing the, the area of it before. Um, so I get my ult off here. I get both Odin's. If I dash through and get the burst damage off, it's going to proc it instantly because you're getting the dash damage, the burst damage on the monolith plus the, the ticks damage so two more ticks of damage and it's going to be proccing basically instantly so that's definitely a necessary interaction that you need to know about because if you do get a blink a big blink ult off with your terra you do want to try and proc your terra ult um, sometimes your teammates can proc it for you but um, you don't really want to rely on them so make sure that you get your, your model uh, root off so you can proc it so, um, just overall a lot of damage and easy really easy to play for the most part some important things to note with uh, Terra's sustain uh, we talked about it before it does scale with power so if we do, do go a bit bru more bruiser we're going to be healing a lot more um, another thing is that her monolith has a 10 second uptime on it so it's going to be on the ground for 10 seconds it's going to tick 20 separate times so 20 separate ticks of healing um, not only that but if you have full CDR on Terra, so we're going to go our 500 pot. This would be our full pill. We have 20 CDR here, 10 here, and then we have 10 from our 500 pot. So now we're sitting at um, 100%, not 100%, but a 40% CDR, 100% of what you can get in CDR. Um, our cooldown on our model is 10.8 seconds, and it lasts 10 seconds. So something you can see here is that um, we're just going to be throwing our monolith here, healing our teammates. You know, they're going to be sitting in this, getting a lot of healing from it. Big, you know, good scaling ability. Going to be healing for, what is it? Um, heal per tick, 15 plus 13, so 28, um, and then it, t it ticks 20 times, so 560 and healing. If they sit in it for 10 seconds, that's a really good heal. Um, oh, it already ran out, but, um, so, like I said, it's up for 10 seconds. The cooldown on it, on it is, uh, 10.8 seconds, so that means 0.8 seconds of downtime where this monolith won't be up. Boom, it just, uh, it just disappeared. Now it's back up again. So, uh, basically what this means is you can chain heal your teammates when you're sieging or getting sieged on and it really allows for easier um, um, team fights and um, sieging and going towards the Titan it's just a lot of sustain uh, for your teammates in it there's just barely any downtime on it 0.8 seconds which is absurd and then of course your your ult heals as well so sometimes Spring say <clears throat> so um, let me just go reset my cooldown real quick say you just there was just a team fight maybe it's like 4v4 3v3 you have full CDR um, it's been like 40 seconds, but you guys really want to push like a Phoenix or something and they're not there and you want to heal up your team Oftentimes you can just group up with your team throw your ult down um, Throw your monolith down and now they're getting the heal from this the heal over time, which is pretty good um, 0.5 seconds for 10 seconds So it's ticking 20 times as well And then they're also getting the the 20 ticks on the monolith So overall it's 40 ticks of healing just bam like that. That's a lot of healing out of nowhere um, It's just really gonna um, get them back towards like full health and everything so um, definitely Terra is still a healing character um, she's definitely a damage character as well but don't forget to use your sustain to your advantage 
um, especially in your team fights when you have that full CDR. So we briefly mentioned it before, but Terrace 2 does block player movement as well. So you can use this to your advantage in the jungle to block off paths that um, the enemy team will be taking to get towards the either like the fire giant, towards objectives, or just towards a team fight. Say you want to block off the enemy solo from going a certain path. You can throw down your two, and you can throw down your monolith, and it's going to block off a wide area. Um, the jungle paths in Conquest are a lot smaller, so um, this is just like an example. It's obviously not the best thing. Uh, but if you go into Conquest, but basically everywhere on the map, you can use Terra 2 to block off a path. And it's uh, five seconds on the uptime on this, so there's going to be five seconds where they're just sitting here and they're not able to lock through. So this is especially good when the Fire Giant is getting low and the enemy team is trying to come in. You can throw down your two to block them off uh, pretty quickly. Um, so that's one thing that you can do with it. But also, um, a lot of times what you can do is you can say that an enemy is like running away and like uh, say they're running towards like the Fire Giant. You can maneuver your... Um, your Terra 2 in a way that's gonna like funnel them a certain way and then a lot of times you can actually like if you're chasing them down you can block them off and use a use the, your Terra 2 to body block them against like a wall or something um same thing with the monolith um it does block player movement as well so if they're running away and you can catch it kind of like a loki here. decoy they can run into it like this and then it'll stop their movement um and that'll make them go one way or the other and it will slow down slow them down a little bit so that you can catch up to them um another thing with Terra is that um, she has really good objective secure with her two. However, it does block uh, autos and stuff. So say you're at the fire giant with your team, and you're you know you're burning this really fast, and you're like, all right, well we're gonna secure it soon. So we're gonna secure it soon, so I'm gonna throw down my two. If your hunter or your mage is over here trying to auto it, this is gonna be blocking them from doing damage. Um, so you gotta be careful with that, and only maneuver in a way or place it in a way that um, your hunters and your mages will still be able to hit the FG. Um, but it's still good secure, so you don't want to just outright lose it. Um, Something to note and that we haven't really talked about at all, and I definitely should be talking about, is that Terra's passive also makes her knockup immune. Um, so a lot of times, uh, like especially around FG or depending on the enemy team comp, you can throw down your monolith and just kind of chill around it so that you, you aren't getting knocked up. Like you can pull this FG here and watch. I have my monolith down so I'm not going to get knocked up. Um, that's just part of her passive along with the Frostbound Hammer type uh, passive that she has with her autos. Um, so just use your, use your monolith in your two in a way that um, you can't just be getting initiated on with knockups for one. Um, a lot of the time, especially when you're playing it in solo, um, you're not really focused on that all that much. It's just like a small mechanic. That's why I haven't really talked about it all that much. Usually your main focus is just going on the enemy backline and getting a big ult off and uh, trying to CC them and kill them. So the easiest way and the best way to go on an enemy backline is Terra, especially when you have your blink up, is to simply blink in, ult them, get both, dash damage is off, and then you can, do two you can also let me go grab my ult back. Um, actually, I don't need my ult for this. Um, you can also just use your dash through auto, and then use your two right after to set up the um, because your root is going to set up your two stun um, really easily. And it's also a lot of burst damage, and the more CC you have, the better. So there is the other way that you can do it, where you set up your two so that you can shatter both your walls. Um, however, I just think that's a little bit slower, and it's not providing a stun for your team. Um, part of the reason that Terra is so good is that she has like, a decent amount of CC, and um, if you're not using your stun in the team fight, it's not going to be all that helpful. Plus, <clears throat> say that I get my roots off, and they just beat this. Um, they made beads and walk away out of my shatter damage. However, you could also get the shatter damage off if they beads and walk away. It just kind of depends on where they are and uh, the situation. But a lot of times, the easiest way to actually dive is to just dash through your monolith and quickly set up your, your shatter damage. So you should be doing that most of the time. Also since the, the monolith is so big, it's such a wide area, um, a lot of times you will be able to hit multiple people with it, especially if the ADC and mid are grouped up. Um, sometimes maybe it's the jungler as well, but a lot of times you will find that at least two people are in the uh, the radius of this, um, this monolith circle. So a lot of times you will be able to hit multiple people with not only your monolith but also the the ult damage that you're blinking in with so um yeah like i said you can do something like this where you set up your, your, uh, your shatter damage pretty easily it's just a little bit slower and if they're moving a lot of time it's gonna be a little bit harder um however it does have a pretty wide cone we'll see here it's a pretty wide cone um but it's just a little bit slower and there's just no stun attached to it so 
Um, if you're playing against better players, a lot of times they may just jump out of the area to begin with. So um, that's why I prefer to just go for the, the simpler and I think a little bit more effective in the fact that I see. CC. Um, that's uh, my favorite way to go on and use in the back line. So that's basically it, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this Terra God Guide. I had a lot of trouble trying to get this to work. Um, I had a lot of audio issues, a lot of recording issues. Um, it's taken me a few days to actually um, finish and actually make it work out. Um, so I really do appreciate it if you guys enjoyed the video or learned a thing or two. Sorry if I was a bit convoluted at times or um, some of the stuff with some of the stuff I said was silly or if it was just maybe not maybe not too organized or something. Um, I do apologize, but. Um, I do think there's a lot of good information and good tidbits in here that you can learn from. So if you do enjoy the video or learn something from it, then uh, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to my channel. I constantly upload God Guides, gameplays, and everything about Smite. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.